It's been so difficult. The Assyrians weren't just proud people. They were beyond proud people. They were difficult people. They, they were self-centered. They were arrogant. They, they were conceited. They, they, were, they were rough people, these Assyrians that had conquered Israel. They, they believed that their own military victories were, were because of their own strength and their own power. They believed that everything that they'd done, they, they'd done on their own. And, and they couldn't be defeated because of their strength. Does that remind you of any nation that you know of today? And they were kind of arrogant about who they were and, and that nobody could touch. And they didn't realize that God was using them as a way to bring Israel back to God and turn them from idol gods and wickedness and selfishness. Now, now Israel, at this time, Israel was broken into two kingdoms, the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom. The two sons of Joseph and the tribes of Ephraim, they, uh, Manassas, uh, Part of the north, were part of the northern kingdom of Israel, and they had fought a civil war against each other because of the uh, of the way that they had treated one another, and it, it, because of the oppression of their people and injustice of their own people. So, so they fought a civil war against each other. So the Lord brought the allowed the Assyrians to come in and use them as a tool, allowing the Israelites to uh, to. to, to kind of experience judgment from God. And I believe that I'm not going to stand here this morning and tell you that everything that happens in America is judgment from God. I'm not going to tell you that, but can I just tell you that any nation that does not recognize the Creator God as the Creator of the universe, does not recognize Him as the supreme power of the universe, is in danger of falling. Can I just tell you that any nation that turns their back on God is in trouble this morning? They're in trouble. I love our country, and I'm proud the fact that I, the fact that I'm an American, and I, I don't take that that, that 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 lightly. The fact that I'm free this morning, but the moment that America turns its back on God, the moment that America turns its back on Israel, we're in trouble, and we're headed in that direction. We're, we're headed that way. No tool is as useful as it is in whichever hands it's in. Now, I, 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 to make sense of that, I'm not a very good mechanic, but I'm even worse plumber. <laughs> Ask my wife. I'm a horrible plumber. When I start fixing plumbing, it gets worse. A whole lot worse. I mean, drowned in the laundry room worse. So you can put plumbing tools in my hand and they're not going to do very much good. I'm not going to be very successful with those plumbing tools. Now you give me a Bible and a microphone and a sweat towel, and I might be able to shut the corner with you when it comes to preaching, but I, I'm not too much when it comes to plumbing. It depends on the hands that it's in. The same thing goes with a church or a nation or anything. Can I tell you this morning that as a church, you and I have the most powerful tool that any, anybody can have, that anybody on this planet has, and that's the power of the Holy Ghost. But the tool is no more useful than the hands that it's been put into. We have to put it to work and use that because in that there is power. In that there is freedom. In that there is liberty. This morning, you and I have the tool to set the captive free. You and I have the tool to bring the drug addict out of addiction. You and I have the tool to be able to bring the alcoholic into a full recovery. But you and I have to use that tool this morning. Oh, I'm not going to have any help today. I'm going to go down the street and preach because I don't have any help here. Even though our nation looks like it's in bad shape, if you were to turn on CNN, I, I can't watch it just a little bit at a time because it's really depressing. Yes, yes. And, and half of it, I honestly, I don't believe half of it anyway. I don't trust any of it. But when I turn it on and, I, and, I, and I, I read it and I see the shape that our country's in and the shape that our world is in, it looks pretty bad. But all through the Bible, the Bible talks about there being a remnant. Yes. A remnant in the word Hebrew means a remainder, yes. a leftover, something else, something different. Yes. Even though our world looks like it's going under, and even though our world looks like it's in bad shape, Thank this you. morning I've got good news. Yes. There's a remnant. Yes. There's still some people. Yes. Our government may pass laws that are contrary to the word of God, but there are still some people yes. that will stand on the word of God. Jesus, but there are still some people, there, there is still a remnant of people that will say there's only one way to heaven, and it's not Muhammad, it's not Buddha, 
I know it's hard to believe, but one time I was really full of zeal and excitement. <laughs> uh, when I first started ministry, me and my father-in-law were in Rona visiting the hospital. I, I, we got on the elevator and we were headed up and it was right after 9-11 and everything that had happened in 9-11. It was just me and my father-in-law on the elevator. The door's open and this guy walks in with a turpin on his head. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. <laughs> I had my Bible under my arm and I was at that point I was gonna change the world anyway. I was gonna get a hold of everybody and pray everybody through the Holy Ghost. <laughs> it didn't matter who they were. We was on the elevator and nobody said anything and I was actually listening for ticket. <laughs> we were standing there on an the elevator and and that, that, that man looked over at me and he looked at my Bible and he said, you and I serve the same God. Uh, my father-in-law didn't say anything. Me being full of zeal, too young and dumb to know any better. I looked at him and I said, no, sir, you're wrong. I said, you see, my God has a son. He died on an old brother. Some of you need to let your face down and it's free to enjoy. Some of you need to let your face down and it's free to enjoy. 
let your face know that our God is a happy God. <laughs> testimony about how he stayed locked up all the time. <laughs> That's who he was last week. <laughs> He's on parole and we can't leave this week. <laughs> I've never been locked up. I just haven't got caught. <laughs> I imagine what it feels like when you've been locked up and all of a sudden you hear the keys hit that jail cell door and it swings open and you're able to walk out of that jail cell. I know people that, that have been in there for years and years and, and haven't been able to experience freedom. How great it must feel to walk outside that jail cell and finally be free. I, I don't know how you would be, but if I was locked up for a long time, I'd, I'd come running out of that jail cell and I'd be yelling and excited and I'd be so happy. I'd be, man, I'd be rejoicing. I look around on church pews and I see people that look like they've been eating persimmons all morning. <laughs> and they've been set free. Yes. Okay, yes. You ain't gonna help me. They've been set free. Yes. They've been delivered. Yes. And they're once on their way to hell. Yes. And they're in the highest part of life. They're washed in the blood. They're royal priesthood. that my faith does for me when we come into the presence of God. When we get led into God, into the presence of the Lord by singing and enjoying praise and worship. As we, as, as we come into God's presence and we begin to worship Him, ushered in with His presence, come hope. Uh, ushered in with His presence as we worship Him, all of a sudden healing shows up. As we worship Him, all of a sudden encouragement shows up. A sudden freedom shows up and liberty shows up. It doesn't take long when you get into the presence of the Lord to not feel so bad anymore. I gotta start preaching. Hold on. <laughs> this is not the new decoration for the pulpit. Somewhere on Bain's Chapel, there's a dog running free this morning. <laughs> Our problem is that we come to church many times with good intentions. Our problem is we come to church many times with the right thought. But there are things that hold us back from getting into God's presence. There are things that hold us back from getting to the place that God wants us to be. I see some people that come through the doors of this church and they're ready to worship the Lord. Man, they're so excited. They're like David. I was glad when they son unto me let us go in the house of the Lord. I see others that are dragging chains. Oh, they want to worship the Lord. Hope I don't get nobody. They want to worship the Lord. But you don't know what they've been through all week. They've been battling spouses. They've been battling problems on the job. Some of them have been sneaking to the liquor store. When nobody's looking until they can cope for a little while. Some of them have been having to go get another prescription because they have to have dope to cope. And they're, they're struggling. They're wondering what's, how in the world they're going to make it to Monday, more or less through Sunday morning. And they sit down on the church pew and they lift their hands to worship the Lord. And guess what happens? They're bound. That's right. Yeah. They're chained up. Yes. The preacher preaches under the power of the anointing. The yes. Holy Ghost starts to move. Yes. They come to the altar. We sing songs like, My chains are gone. I've been set free. We worship the Lord. We let go of a little bit of that chain. Come here, Levi. Where you at? <laughs> I needed to do this years ago. <laughs> <laughs> Need a bigger chain than the logging chain. I can see the headlines now. Pastor Haynes' son during Sunday. We come to the altar and we feel a little bit better. 
And we get ready to walk back to our seat. And everything seems fine. And then we're reminded of something that happened to us before we come to church. Anybody with me this morning? We're reminded of something that somebody said to us. comes back to us and all of a sudden we're, we're hungry for it again and we try to get away and we can't get away because that chain's always there and it's always pulling us and we're suffering to wonder why we can't press through like everybody else can. I'm telling you this morning you might be chained up but there is freedom in this house. If you don't get free the Bible says that the wages of sin Ain't cutting you in two. <laughs> the Bible says the wages of sin is death. Uh-huh. If you stay chained up to sin, eventually sin is going to keep entangling you. That's right. Yeah, yeah. It's going to keep right. wrapping you up. I'm going to go I'm going to go around. I'm going to and eventually it's going to wrap you in such a way that you're not going to feel like going to church That's anymore. Right. Right. You're not going to feel like worshiping the Lord anymore. You're not going to feel like reading the Bible anymore because you're so chained up. You're chained up with worries about the week. You're chained up with worries about your health, about your family. And all those chains are holding you back. All those chains are keeping you down. But listen, I've got good news this morning. Hold on just a second. I've got good news. There are moments that we ought to be sad. There are moments that we're going to have burdens. There are moments we're going to go through things. But listen to what Psalms 121 and 1 says. It's a song of the pilgrims on their way to the mountain to worship the Lord. It says, you know, I will lift up my eyes to the hills where my help comes from. Verse 98 and verse 4 says this. It says, shout to the Lord, all the earth. Break out in praise. Somebody's going to and sing for joy. Sing your praise to the Lord with the harp and the melodious song, with the trumpets and the sound of the ram's horn. Make a joyful symphony before the Lord the King. Let, let the sea and the, everything in it shout, shout His praise. Let the earth and all the living things join in. Let the rivers clap their hands in glee. Let the hills sing out their songs of joy before the Lord. Just for a minute, I, I'm getting a little bit off base. I probably have the most beautiful ride to church of any pastor in Virginia, probably. When I come across the mountain and I'm coming down the other side, man, some days it's just so beautiful. It looks so good. And I'm thinking, man, I'm so lucky to be able to see this view. If I'm not rushing to get over, most of the time I'm rushing to get over here. Amen. Amen. But think just for a moment. You get up in the mornings and we're, we're usually so busy about our day. We're so busy about doing the things that we have to go through our lives doing. Think just for a moment what this song said. It's all of creation. Worship. Yes. To that bird outside your window, you keep sticking your head over your pillow yeah. over your head to try to keep from hearing him so you don't have to get up. Stick your head a little bit closer to the window because he might be singing amazing grace. It's hard to leave chained up. 
It's hard to leave the same way that you came. If you've truly stepped into his presence, it's hard to leave an experience like that and still be covered up with doubt and still be covered up with sin. Because every time I've ever stepped into the presence of the Lord, I've walked away differently. Every time I've stepped into his presence, I've been changed this morning. Hey, if you feel like you're walking around changed this morning, maybe you ought to just make and push your way in to the presence of the Lord. Because in his presence, chains cannot stand. In his presence, sin cannot uphold. In his presence, my God, cancer's got to let go. Yeah. <laughs> now there's times the Bible says in Ecclesiastes that there's a season for everything yeah. there's times to be solemn there's times to be still there, there, there's times that the Holy Ghost is like a gentle breeze the Bible described at one point the Holy Ghost is a dove coming down there. a beautiful quiet solemn thing but there are other times and I think that song that we just read that, that it's talking about a different place it, it, it's it, not talking about a solemn place because it starts out saying, shout to the Lord. Sometimes you just got a shallow grip. Even though you don't feel like it. Even though everything's all messed up. You just got to call those things that are not as though they were. Amen. And worship God like you feel good anyway. Yeah. Worship God like your kids are on drugs. Worship God like your grandchildren have come to the altar. Yeah. Worship God like everything's okay. It says shout to the Lord. I like the next part. It says break out in praise. Yeah. 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 But wait a minute. I'm chained up. How am I going to break out in praise? Wait a minute. I've got chains all around me. How in the world am I going to break out in praise? I'm glad you asked. Because yeah. I'm about to tell you. Yeah. Listen. And then it shall come to pass in that day. Here's what happens. When the people of God outlast the sinful, wicked people of the world, it says, and, and it shall come to pass on that day that his burden shall be taken away from off his shoulder and the yoke from off his neck and the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. God has promised that there will come a day. Yes. 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 There will come a day when there will be no more yoke, Brother David. Yes. There'll come a day you won't have to worry anymore. There'll come a day you won't have to fight anymore. There'll come a day you won't have to go to the doctor anymore. There'll come a day you won't have to worry about what other people are doing and other people are saying. There'll come a day when there'll be perfect liberty because there'll be no yoke there because of the anointing. The day the Assyrians conquered Israel in our text, there wasn't anything left to rejoice about. They had taken everything. They had destroyed it all. The nation's treasure was lost. The wealth of the people had been taken. There was no feast. There was no singing. They were beyond grief. The Bible says in verse 14 that no creature fluttered a wing or opened their mouth to church. The birds weren't even singing. That's how bad it was. It was a horrible time. This was warfare without honor. They would come and they would salt the fields so nothing would grow there after they attacked them. They would cover up their wells. They would, they would do all these horrible things to them. They would scorch their farmland and, and burn their forest. And it, there would be nothing there. What they didn't take, they destroyed. What they couldn't enslave, they killed. It looked like Israel had no hope. It looked like Israel had no hope. But thank God there was still a river. For everybody that comes to this church that was once hooked on drugs and alcohol, that thought there was no hope, that thought there was no chance for them, there was a remedy, there was a lighthouse, there was a place that they could go where somebody said, don't give up just yet. Have you tried Jesus? I've got a testimony of a young man. I will not get his name right. His name is something. Timothy William Parker. Timothy grew up in a, a Christian home. His parents were, were 
were, were Christians. They'd been taking this church his entire life. He was a middle child. His, his parents had, had good jobs. He had a good raise. And he, he had a, every opportunity to become a, a great person. He went to school and later on he went to college. And he, he got a master's degree. And he was hired a, as a manager at a large corporation. Had a big salary. It seemed that everything was going good for him. But this young man had a secret. He had something that nobody knew about, not even his parents, not any of his co-workers. For recreation, he started using drugs a little bit. Every now and then on the weekends, he would, he, he would, he would experiment with methamphetamines just because it felt good. It, it helped him relax and, and relieve the stress from work, and he would forget about the week. For after a little while, it turned from a fix on the weekends to a fix on Wednesday to try to make it through the rest of the week. After... After, after that went on for a little while, it, it turned off, turned into a, getting a little fix on Monday morning to try to get a boost and to start, start moving a little bit on Mondays. And then later on, it, kept, it came to the point where he was having to get a fix at once just to try to make it through the day. What was once uh, Timothy's drug habit had an average of $50 to $100 a day now became a $2,000 a day habit. He was spending all the money that he had on methamphetamines. Now jump forward uh, about three years in time. Timmy had hit rock bottom. He had hit the end of his boat and he found himself like the prodigal son we've talked about for the last two weeks. He went back to his house, his home, his family. And there he, he began to go through detox and he, he spent the, the next year almost just detoxing and having a horrible time and having to, having to stay hidden in his room because he didn't want anybody to see what he was going through. And he'd, been, he'd already been fired from his job and arrested and his girlfriend had left him. His world had crumbled all around him. I read part of his testimony and I, I, could, I, I loved what I heard about him. Because he said it, after he went through all this detox, he was sitting in church. He'd been saved. He was sitting on the pew, much like Levi is this morning. He was sitting there celebrating two years of the fact that he was sober. Two years of the fact that he was clean. But he was still battling those same old demons. That's right, that's right. Still battling the, the same old cravings that only a drug addict understands. Even though he had been saved, even though he had been sober, he was still fighting those problems. The preacher had been preaching. He was sitting there thinking about what it was like to get high and thinking about all the things, all those memories begin to flood back to him. He said, as he sat there, he said, and the preacher finished preaching and the praise team came up and they started to sing a song that had been reworked, an old song. He said, they started singing Amazing Grace. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. And then he said, it got to the point, I said, my chains are gone. Yes. I've been set free. Yes. He said, at that moment, he said, all of a sudden, he understood the words to that song. He said, I was sitting there craving, but I no longer had to go back to that place. I no longer lived there anymore.
You may not even realize it. But your chain, if you're lost this morning, you don't know Jesus, you've been carrying a chain around, a chain of sin. And that sin, that, that chain continues to wrap you and continues to cut around you. And eventually it will destroy you. But I've got good news. You can serve such a great God. He'll forgive you. He'll uplift you. He'll untie you. He'll unchain you. And He'll set you free. He'll give you a new life this morning because the Bible says in John 8, 36, if the Son shall make you free, you'll really be free. You'll be free indeed. Yes. Maybe you know of Timothy William Parker. Probably every one of us do. Maybe it's a cousin. Maybe it's a, a brother or sister. Maybe it's a, a neighbor. Maybe it's you. Maybe you know one of those people and you know what they're going through. You know what it sounds like to yes. be a taskmaster. Yeah. Maybe that's the story of your life. Awesome. Can't wait to get out of the church. Got to get back to the other store. Can't wait to get out of the church. Got to have another people. Somebody better help me. I can't wait to get out of church. So I can throw stick and look at pornography again. And the chain's there. Holding you back. Maybe it's a relationship. You can't seem to get away from it. And it changes you. No matter how hard you try to get through. But this morning, through the anointing. Not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, say the Lord. By the anointing. Be heard one final time. Yes. 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 My chains are falling. I've been set free. Yes. Yes. I don't look there anymore. Yes. I'm not the same person I used to be. Sin is the chain, the yoke that Satan places on mankind and slave us today. Hear so many people say, I can't serve God. I can't live a Christian life. 